Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video will kind of go into a little bit more detail on the app that I made today at the Microsoft Business Application Summit, in case you would also like to make the app along with some of the extensions that I did. So first of all, we had a list and Angelie made this list that has all our session titles in there as we decide them. We'd put a session title in a description and then the speaker would be selected. We would decide what the session level was. And we had a column for likes, which is just a numeric column with zero decimal places because they're whole numbers. And we had an approval status of approved, rejected, and pending. The whole idea was we would get these approved, people would like them, and you can kind of see which sessions were most possible, most popular internally, right? As far as who really wanted to like you know promote those sessions in addition to that you'll notice that this is the internal um, SharePoint ID column so I use that as a foreign key in a second list called comments now I didn't use a lookup I most definitely could have I just decided to just keep it simple since power apps was setting this number so power apps creates the ref ID when a new um, comment is being made and it just takes the ID of the session and puts it in this ref ID column so this is like your primary key and this is like your foreign key and then with that said that was kind of the setup the next thing we did we just ran an app from data right and we named this uh, uh, my session we might have named it something else but I have to name it something different so I don't get a clash I'll name it my session app and uh, this will start running and I pointed out that you know this does take about a minute or so but what it's doing for us is it's creating what we call a core three screen app right the reason I chose create an app versus using customized forms is because we wanted to embed this in teams and we wanted our team to have a mobile application so that they could like the sessions on the go so We've got this core three screen mobile app that we're building right here, and it's creating the base screens for us, a gallery screen with a whole bunch of functionality like search and uh, sorting, and then a detail screen so that when you click on one of the sessions, you can learn everything about it that's not shown in the gallery. And then thirdly, if you don't like what it says, you can click the edit pencil and therefore get to an edit form and edit it. These three screens are made for us out of the box to save us some time. What I'm going to do with you today is show you how you can further customize the app very quickly just to give it a unique look, give you a chance to really like express your creativity and also make the app more interesting. So I'm going to start by reminding you that you can always change the theme. We give you 10 different themes right out of the box. So if you like that dark theme look, you've got that with a few accent colors. I actually love the gray. So I start by se selecting a theme. Um, that's like my first step because after you select the theme, everything that drops down respects that theme. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, change the background of this screen to a light gray. And you'll see why I'm doing that a little bit later. But I just want to give that background a little bit of a color. Right now the gallery is transparent, but I will be changing that. Let's go talk about the gallery. I want to change uh, a few things. Um, for instance, look at all this functionality I get up here. It's going to search the title field right here. You can see that using the title field is going to search, but I actually don't want it to sort by title. I want it to sort by the, 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 the created date, right? The day the item was created and I only want it to sort descending. So I'm just going to edit this so that I take out the ascending, descending situation. I don't want it in this case. I want these always to be descending because I want the newest one at the top. Um, and I want it sorted by creating, but I want to search by title. So that's just one more thing that I'll do. I'll also go into our data panel here and change the layout of this. Actually, what I want to do is I want to show the speaker's photo next to the title. So we have a layout called image and title. That's going to be perfect for what I want. It's also going to get rid of those other two fields you noticed, the claims field and the ID that I don't need, right? Um, and now how do I get that image to be the speaker's image? This is another like, so the first takeaway I want to say to you is 
don't forget to use themes and layouts, right? They're like, if, if you take away nothing else, that's a really helpful tool right there. The second thing I want to tell you is that you always want to insert data sources. Whenever you can help your user to get data that they need that may not be in that single place, that's the beauty of Power Apps. Just go ahead and add a data source. I'm going to add the Office 365 users connection because that will give me the pictures that I need for the profiles, right? Um, I want a picture, and so I'm going to add that. It also gives me all of that profile information and relevant people and relevant documents. Um, so now I'm going to, now that I have that connection, I'm just going to go in here and use the Office 365 user photo v2 here and I'm going to put in these parens the email of the person I want to show their picture in this case for this item that would be found in the speaker column which is the people column so when I hit a dot after the name of a people column I get all the profile properties right here what I want is email just because that connector requires the email to go and find that picture now, some people have different shaped pictures. I want this to look pretty consistent. So I'm also going to change the image position property, which is the one right after that. And I'm going to set that to fill, which kind of um, will clean up the fact that some images may be oriented different. Lastly, I like round images, really. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the size 96 and set the border range to the same size and width of the picture. And then once I click out of there, you'll see that it changes to a round shape. All right, perfect. Works really well for me. All right, now let's go clean up our gallery a little bit. I'm going to show you my three favorite properties of the gallery. And that is template fill, templating padding, and templating sides. This gives me the ability to make card-like experiences, right? So I'm going to start by adding a template fill because right now the template is transparent. I'm going to add white. And then I'm going to put padding around that template so that you can see it better. Um, so I'm just going to put 20 pixels of padding and all of a sudden you start to see a card. I'm also going to leverage this separator, but what I have to do is make it a little bit taller. So I'm going to set the height of the separator to five and that will give me the ability now to play with the color of the separator. All right. So I'm going to take the fill of that separator, which is really just a rectangle. And I'm going to say if this item got approval status, dot value, because it's a choice list, I need to dot down into the value, um, equals approved. So, or we could do the rejected, whichever way you want to do it. I'm going to do the rejected, let's see, just to try something new, and then red. So now, and I, if it's not rejected, I'm going to just have it red, gray. Now, I can always add in here another condition, like I can copy this right here and then put a return, just shift enter there, shift enter there. And then what I can do here, just gonna get this to, is I can change this to approve and make the approved ones green. And then everything else will be gray. This is a quick way to add color um, for status and it kind of pops out without me having to add a lot of text. Um, here I have a problem with it being truncated because it's a single line of text. All I have to do is go over to the property panel and set the auto height to on and it will automatically height that, right? And I'll, I'll make the text like 18 point. I wouldn't go under 14 with mobile apps. Um, so just kind of stay above 14 with mobile apps. I don't really like this Chevron right here. Not that it's not a great thing. I'm just going to replace it. So I'm going to copy it's on select because I'm going to reuse it. And then I'm going to delete this and I'm going to insert in here the more icon. I like that one a lot. I also like the more icon straight up and down, you know, like we're, and I do it by just typing three dots. Um, I'll show you that one day. Now I just put that on the outside of the gallery. You got to make sure that you're in the gallery before you insert your icon. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on the more now that I'm in there. Okay. And then I'll move that over here on the right. It's fine right over there on the right. And then get rid of that one that I didn't mean to place there. Now what I'm going to do is go in here and actually, um, 
insert a icon for likes. And I just I decided to get my icon for for likes directly from PowerPoint. And that's because if you bounce over to PowerPoint for a minute, you have this icons here and it has a ton of icons. All you have to do is select the icons you want, color them the way you want, and I often match them to my Power App, and then save them as a picture, right? Click on them, save them as a ping, PNG, right? And then you can use them in your app. So if you notice, I'm going to go into my media here, and I'm going to browse to my um, folder and pick up an icon that I made like that using PowerPoint. And it's a very tiny image. You'll see it pop up here. It's 960 bytes, right? And you've got you've got for images, videos, and audio a maximum of 200 megs. So this is a really great thing to use because they're going to stay very small, right? Now I'm going to insert an image icon in here. So I'm just going to go to media and I'm going to image, and I'm going to fill that image with that one. It's just use the name, same name that you use to name the file use that name here and now I have this likes uh, icon here now the reason I use this one and not the one that comes with power apps in the icon is because I actually want to put the number of likes inside this hand so that it's both a button and a rel and a showing of how many likes they are so I'm going to add a label label here and change the labels value to the likes from the column in SharePoint. So this item dot likes, and then I'm going to just move this over, make it smaller. So again, I'm going to go for that 18 points, the same as the text. I'm going to make it white, and I'm going to center it. And then I'm going to just make sure that it's above the thumb, the thumbs up, right? You may want to also um, bold it if that makes it look better to you. Now, this is actually going to be a button. That's why I made sure I did it last and it completely covers the thumbs up because I'm going to change the on select of this so that people can change the likes just by clicking the likes, right? So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put a tiny little patch statement in here. So just patch. I love patching from a gallery. You know why? Because when you patch from a gallery, you don't need a condition. You can just type this item and that covers the whole condition story. And then I'm going to put the name of the column in there and do a little bit of math. This item likes plus one will give me my new like. Now, another thing I want to do, because I, I want that to refresh, um, I want that to refresh live for them. I'm going to just refresh the data source um, so that it refreshes for them. Okay. Now, I might put my likes in a collection if we had time. That way, when I refresh, I just have to refresh likes. But in this case, I'm refreshing the whole data source. So you will see a little bit of a blink here. So now I'm just going to click on any one of these um, likes and you'll see and you'll see that uh, people can like directly from here. This guy, I think we did paste. Did we paste our navigation back in? No, we forgot. We have it on the clipboard still, right? Remember I cut it out? So I'm going to just change the on select here to that navigation and now this will actually navigate over to the uh, detail form. Uh, one thing I just want to do before we leave here, and there's a lot you can do here, is I want to change uh, this like right here so that nobody can change this in the edit form, right? So all I'm going to do is highlight that card and change the the display mode for this card um, to be um, uh, view, right? So I will unlock it. I don't want people to ever edit this on the form. Um, because they should only be liking from liking, right? Um, I'm just going to change this display mode to view, right? Um, so that nobody can edit that. The other thing you remember you can do that you can do with, you can change some of these uh, items here. Um, for instance, if I go into advanced, uh, I go into properties here and open up this panel. This session level right now is just a text field. We could have done it as a choice list. The other thing you can do is when you have a simple text field like that, you can change it to a slider, right? I think that's a numeric field. So I'm going to just change it to a slider, which might make it a little bit faster to change when you're um, 
in the on the phone so I will just put an edit slider here and that way they can just grab that slider to change that session level and move it around okay now I will make sure that whenever I do that that I set the default of this slider to be parent default um, that might not automatically happen but you need that to be parent default and you need the minimum to and the maximum to reflect your list right in our case the minimum for a uh, talk is 100 and the maximum for a talk level is 400 so I wouldn't want to let this be any higher than that and that will make sure that the slider doesn't let them uh, submit an incorrect value everything else is pretty much easy to do but that's how easy it is to kind of take an app from data make it your own and then it's very easy you save publish this and you can put it in your teams instance right so basically doing just a save and a publish then you go into teams and you add it as a tab really really easy to do uh, so I'm going to publish this um, because I'm working from a SharePoint list, everybody has access to the data, but I still need to share this app. And then I will go into Teams, and I can easily just add it as a tab in my team. And so very easy stuff, strong integration. Don't forget this what I'm about to do right here. You can do for Power BI. You can do for Planner. I could have added a Planner connection. To that app and created a Kanban board for all the different things that need to be done in preparation for each session so that could have been done from the power app as well so a lot of opportunities to kind of bring information into people um, it towards your team using teams it kind of brings everything together um, I love adding Power BI in here, so I'll connect Power BI to the actual session list and kind of get some trends that way of the likes and things like that. I might even count comments per item to see which ones were very popular. You can just type the name of your app in here and it'll, it'll kind of search through all of your apps. What we are doing to move forward on here is we are actually going to end up... Um, improving the discovery of apps so that not only can you share your you can post your own apps in teams but you can anything shared with you you can also discover it or a featured app in the company you could also discover and embed here but but more beautiful than that not only can I do my likes right here in my team instance but I can also um, do it on my phone so I really like that really cool situation you can see that the demo I had is right here um, very cool situation so I think this is something you might want to give a go um, lots of opportunity here um, in this one I actually did end up adding adding comments as well I didn't do that in this demo but I added a little field at the top of the details that says how many likes and how many comments when you click on the comments it takes you to a page that talks about the comments and you can also add a new comment so lots of things that you have an opportunity to do so enjoy and I hope to talk to you soon at the next uh, video where we talk about what you can do with power apps in your business